What's up, everybody? My name is Lee Shaner, and you're tuned in to You Feel Me. How, how long you been out on the road now? You just doing spot dates and shit? Oh, I've been at the crib. Oh, really? Yeah, for like the last uh, two, three weeks. Yeah. Um, I was in London before that. I did a little run. Um, Jupiter Jam, L.A., couple shows, New York, couple shows, London show. Where you play uh, out in L.A.? Um, the El Rey. Oh, Theater. yeah. Two nights sold out back to back. Shit back to back. Yeah. That's a big venue. That's like, yeah, what, 900 cap or something like that? No That's idea. good. Yeah, that's good. A lot of cap. No cap. No cap. Yeah, yeah. the El Rey, that's like the, the step before you're blown the fuck up and sell out <laughs> the El Rey. So, like, it's about to happen. That's what that means. Sold the bitch out twice. That's man. good. Gotta, that's real good. Trying to take it up. So, you've been at the crib three weeks. Where's the crib? I live in Chicago on the west side. In Chicago. Um, but you're not from Chicago, right? St. Louis. From St. Louis. The Lou. Yeah, uh, born and raised in St. Louis? Born and raised as fuck. I've never been to St. Louis. Tell me a little bit about it. Small town. Costs a lot to fly out of there. Mm -hmm. Cool ass people. Good piece of good Chinese food. Actually, the first Chinese person in the world is from St. Louis. And that's well, why the first I, Chinese person in the world got to be from China. No, nah, they was found in St. Louis. <laughs> and real shit, and they really? brought Chinese food to St. Louis. Get out. We got the best Chinese food in the world. That's something that I wouldn't have known. Yeah. Yeah, what's it like growing up there? You say small town. I thought St. Louis is a big city. It's, it's, a, it's a big city, but a small town because the population doesn't match the size of the city. Mm -hmm. It's like it fits about, a I guess, like some, don't quote me, but some million, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it's like 100,000 <laughs> population. It's not big at all. Right, like right. the city area. No so more. everybody's on the outskirts. Yeah, something. motherfuckers yeah. moving out, and then it's like people yeah. in the county. So, like, the metropolitan area isn't as populated as it used to Did be. you grow up in the metropolitan area? North side. The yeah. north side. And what, what's the north side like? It's hood as fuck. Yeah, here's the thing that I don't think a lot of people realize about St. Louis is that statistically I've heard it's more dangerous there than it is in Chicago per capita or something. But people like don't assume that, you know, like Chicago gets used as a scapegoat in the in the conversation of the country. I feel safe in Chicago. Really? Wow. So growing up on the north side of St. Louis, scary? It's just more so a lot of anxiety. It ain't scary. It's just yeah. like shit. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, make sure I ain't out here looking like a fucking lick. Yeah, right. Goddamn. Lollipop and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, how did your family end up in St. Louis? Um, I don't fucking know. I think my granddad, his his people is from Arkansas, and they ass just moved up to St. Louis and shit. Yeah. Man, um, yeah. I, I literally, that's all I know. St. Louis, well, growing up, that's all I knew. St. Yeah. Louis. A lot of people from my city, that's all they know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I said, it costs a lot to fly to small towns like St. Louis, so. You don't buy flights. If you want to drive out of town, it's kind of hard to get a bunch of people on board to go out. Of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of people just know the city, G. And I ain't, I ain't take my first flight till like maybe a couple years ago. No way. South by Southwest. Yeah, my manager brought me my first plane ticket. Wow. He actually became my manager. After he bought my ticket, I was like, bro, you want to be my manager, bro? <laughs> he was like, Because right. he put that faith in you already. He's like, all right, I, I believe in you. Hell yeah. So you believed in him. Hell yeah. Chris Classic, no cap. Shout out, Chris. Uh... So growing up in St. Louis in this small area, like, did everybody kind of know everybody, or how's that? Hell yeah, it's small. You know, I, you know, you know how hoes. It's too small. Mm -hmm. They just mean, you know, what I'm saying, motherfuckers been around. Yeah. But everybody know everybody in St. Louis, and to a certain extent, like, if you know one person, you know, thirty people. By yeah. Just that one motherfucker. If you if you step outside your school district and go to another school's event one time, you damn near just in the twine with the whole city now. Like, mm -hmm. it's just super quick. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's still some undiscovered things out there that we ain't, you know, some unturned leaves and pages in St. Louis, new little dips I ain't never seen before. Like, damn. <laughs> oh, God. Did you grow up uh, both folks? Both your parents? Oh, God. Mama and Diddy in the crib. Yep. Both really? Of them. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, you know what? Lovely. My other podcast that I that I have, one of the ongoing themes is that, like, absentee fathers lead to fucking people becoming musicians. So it's rare <laughs> to hear, like, I always hear, like, oh, no, my parents are divorced, this and that. But you grew up with your mom and your dad. What do they do? What did your mom do? My mom, she's a singer, and my dad's a, he's a musician. He plays piano. No way. So, like, so you grew yeah. up in a musical-ass family. I grew up in a fucking speaker. Like, yeah. my, I live, I grew up inside of a fucking... <laughs> a radio what, what were they playing When you were growing up Everything From gospel to goddamn They d Everything but rap Really They played They had a few rap songs They liked But they didn't play rap mm -hmm. Everything but rap I had to go find it on my own But like They uh, they play a bunch of soulful shit A bunch of gospel shit A bunch of jazz uh, I play drums So like me and my pops mm. Just jam all the time You know Shit like I'm that I'm not surprised to hear That you play drums Because I feel <laughs> like As a rapper You find 
different and intricate pockets of the beat that other people aren't fucking with. Oh God, you little mm-hmm. hidden pockets on the inside of the you, jacket. Like, that's where I like to dwell. All of your <laughs> verses that. feel like fills. You know what I'm saying on For the sure. drums. Yeah, yeah. Um, do your folks perform out? Were they in bands and shit like that? Were they out playing or they play What's in church? Day? Uh yesterday yeah the last time playing was probably yesterday they play they oh, they're every, still out they do their thing man they travel like they still do their thing that's amazing yeah yeah did you grow up in church yeah hell yeah, yeah. Uh, were you in the choir and shit fuck no nah. no I played the drums you played the drums fuck at church no nah, I wasn't in the choir hell yeah nah. is that fuck how you nah. learned to play the drums at church <laughs> uh no nah, I mean yeah it, it it gave me that it gave me that um experience you know how you got to get thrown in the fire yeah it gave me that but uh, outside of that i was just playing at the crib with my pops you know what i'm saying playing in the laundry room next to my sister room because he had mad around. different instruments or what he just had a piano we went we had money like that like yeah. he, he he had a uh he bought me this old pearl farm series drum set big ass 12 13 16 uh five piece kit yeah a starter kit and uh he had his piano you know his keyboard the one same keyboard he had for so long, and then one little amp, and we'll just jam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. We ain't have a bunch of instruments, but he bought me like a uh, little cheap mic, a little task cam. Uh, that was my first thing I used to record on, mm. and shit. It's like a four track? Or was it? No, it was two. It was just oh, uh, yeah. two, and like it's only left mono and right, so you gotta make sure you plug into the left, <laughs> like type shit. So yeah, it's yeah. like he got me that shit, and I was just you know what I'm saying, making beats on Fruity Loops when it was called Fruity Loops with the carrot and shit. Yeah, now I was now always wondering. NFL. That used to make me think carrots was fruits. Yeah, I'm like, so it was a carrot or fruit? Cause the logo Fruity Loops, is lo- the, yeah, yeah, it's a carrot. When I was a kid, kind of fucked me up, and I realized some some vegetables could actually play both sides. Yeah, back in the early 2000s, it was like low key embarrassing to say you made beats on Fruity Loops just because the name sounded so unprofessional. They're like, <laughs> on a bitch, you crazy. Motherfuckers got down in the early 2000s was definitely on Fruity Loops. Oh, yeah, crazy. of course. Going, going crazy. crazy on a bitch. Back then, big bro, back then, one motherfuckers going super crazy on FL. Niggas just didn't know. Yeah. And the thing was, all the best drum sounds was coming from Fruity Loops or straight from keyboards. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't no, like, it was just Fruity Loops, bro. That shit, the shit. And since they evolved it to FL, like, they just put that bitch on Mac, so I'm back making beats again. I know. I've been making hella well, beats. Well, now you can, like, like, auto-tune in Fruity Loops. You can do Melodyne inside Fruity Loops and everything. They, they just anything. They just upgraded to yeah. where it's, like, crazy. I could crazy legitimately now. record an entire, like, treat it like Pro Tools. I just wouldn't, but yeah. I just use it for The beat. thing about FL, you could get that the <laughs> swing on those drums, too. You know, you could get, like, the little, just, like, Mm. Little on beat, off beat shit yeah. that you couldn't do in other programs. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I love Nudge FL. Um, I man, how early did you get FL? How how old were man, you? Man, my pops, so I, I I got FL the same day I, I got my first dog. I had uh, this rock roller. My pops came to the crib with a with puppy and a puppy computer? and a motherfucking disc. Yeah, and he like, hey. <laughs> You want this dog type <laughs> shit? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> raw as hell, a little rock roller puppy. Yeah. and then he, he's like, um. He put the FL in. It was really for him, though. Yeah. I think. I don't know. I can't tell. And then he was making beats. And I'm like, shit, I want to make a beat. And then we used to have beat battles and shit against each other all the time. So Man, that's dope. So your parents really encouraged your creativity. Fuck yeah. That's amazing. They're the reason I do it. Because it's like, it was more so like, nigga, I know you don't do homework, so shit. That's what I was just going to ask you about. What was you like in school? I was terrible, bro. I wouldn't recommend being like me in school. I'm not going to even explain how I am in school because I don't want no kids to... <laughs> To think it's cool. Yeah, yeah. shit ain't cool. Well, did you play sports and shit? I didn't do nothing but smoke and do music. I really? played sports. I mean, I play like, I play sports on some regular nigga shit just yeah. outside. Yeah, 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 but probably. I ain't like organized sports, team sports and shit. I, I can't do that because my mind just didn't work on some like, you can tell me what to do. I could, I was in marching band for a year. I couldn't do that because yeah. my mind just didn't work on a, you can tell me what to do basis. So you're just a very independent thinker. Um, yeah. Rebellious in a sense? Are you rebellious? Is that what it is? It ain't, nah, I, I feel like, I feel like rebellious is like intentional. It's yeah. not even perp- on purpose. It's just like, a lot of people don't think about how I'm thinking, think how I'm thinking at the moment. Most people don't think how I'm thinking, so it'd be too hard to like try to get, you feel me? Yeah. Trying to expect you to have this idea that I have, you know what I'm saying? Right, and right. you tell me to do something, it's like, that ain't even what I wanted to do. Right. From that point, so. Uh, so when it you talk about like, making beats and shit, I'm thinking like, well, you probably like 11, 12 years old, something like that. <clears throat> oh, you asked for age. Um, I was 10. 10? Yeah, I was 10. I got my dog when I was 10. I mean, that to me is so, that's so wild. That's like so advanced to be like, okay, here I am. I'm going to be working on this thing that's going to become my career at 10. Like, were you ever out just doing like regular kid shit? Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Like, what would you go out and do? 
outside. Yeah. Do shit. So how know. do you? So in a dangerous neighborhood, how do you stay out of trouble? Bring your ass in the house when the That's motherfuckers it. start shooting. Just like go in the house, shit. <laughs> stay out of trouble. No, yeah. I mean you don't really stay out of trouble as a kid. It's yeah. like what can we get away with? That's yeah. all the fuck you want to do. But it's like at the same time, you know what I mean? You ain't. I'm, I never was stupid growing up. Like growing up in the hood makes yeah. you immediately street smart and immediately your sense of danger is heightened. Like you can smell that shit. You can tell when somebody on some bullshit. So like I ain't never been no stupid kid. Yeah, like I right. always was like, oh, 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 they're over there drinking pills. Oh, they're over there about to shoot each other. Let uh-huh. me take my ass in the crib. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? It's only been one instance I got in trouble for like not going in the crib. They was shooting. But I didn't think it was actual gunshots, and my mama had to come outside and get me. Oh shit! Beat my ass the whole way in the house. Yeah, man. Got in the house, got my ass beat furthermore. Uh. Yeah. And, and at the at the time as a kid, you're like, why are they beating me? And now looking back as a dog, you're like, oh, they were beating me to protect me. Fuck yeah, they was beating me to save me. <laughs> it's real shit though. Um. So were you already writing raps then too? Back when you was like ten? Seven. Seven. Tell me about this. You're just writing like little poetry, like little four bar joints or something. Fuck or like, no, raps. Cause you, I was trying to get on beats, bro. Really? I, on some G shit. I always wanted to rap. Like I'm happy I got to do this. Yeah. But I always wanted to rap, bro. When so I was who were your guys? Ludacris. I love Bone. Yeah. I love. Uh, I love the uh, Buster. My Buster, the first rapper I ever heard. The Wooha yeah. got you all Ooh, in check. check. First rap song I ever like. Then uh, Eminem, Way I Am, yeah. that made me like go look at lyrics. Twister, his oh, fast yeah, ass flows. Yeah. But yeah, that early, that's who I was fucking with. Phil Mob, shit like oh, that. Oh man, I love Phil Mob. They're yeah. so slept on. Phil Mob and Nappy Roots, I feel like so slept on. Nappy from Roots, that era. man. God damn. Yeah. All my life, I've been, been broke. Yeah, that's yeah. that shit, yeah. man. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I grew up just on a bunch of country rappers, actually, now that I think about it. Country niggas and uh, yo, Field Mob had a wild ass style, and I would have never really <clears throat> viscerally put that together. But now that you say that's an influence, I could see that as an influence. Yeah, boy, it's your boy Boondock, yeah. aka Smoke from the Lodge, that Chaco Carlo Luke. Yeah, that nigga just be all over the. You know what I'm saying? Did you grow up trying to imitate rappers? Like, could you do impressions of people? I, yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, but that's like that was my shit. That's I still, I still impersonate motherfuckers with. Yeah, right. I do a person voice any any day. It's yeah. just all inflections, like, and that actually helped me in my recording, just knowing like inflections can change a whole person's voice, mm-hmm. like. Me and you can talk in the same tone right now, but mm-hmm. our inflections is the difference between each other. You yeah, know what absolutely. I'm saying? And it's like doing that and learning that shit with some on some on some rapping shit. I was like, damn, I can whole time have I can be like eight different motherfuckers. Yo, because you know when you oh man, like I, I love Black Swan, like full, you know, yeah, full transparency. Like I'm a, I'm an actual fan, Thank and you. so like in listening to your raps, there are rappers that come along every once in a while where like. Man, this rap shit ain't a mystery to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I was rapping for a while. Like, I know how to do it. And so, like, most of the time I can listen to somebody and, like, you can kind of crack the matrix and you can see what they were doing. But there are some times when rappers come along and I go, how the fuck did they just do that? And you're one of those dudes. Like, you and Chance and Andre, like, there are yeah. these dudes with these wild styles that you're like, how did they do that? And so, yeah, when you talk about inflections, I mean, there are so- times in songs where you do a full, like, 180 pivot where you're mm-hmm. doing one voice and switch to another and then a harmony where I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Yeah. yeah this is a bunch of breathing, man. I learned how to actually recently. Um, I, I don't know if you noticed on Black Swan, it's a bunch of women on my album. Uh-huh. All of those women are great vocalists. Mm-hmm. All of those women, I take heed to what they say. Mm-hmm. They're my friends. They're like actually my friends. Like mm-hmm. none of them. I damn near see all of them very, very often. Who you had like Raven on Raven, there? Raven, John Doe. No. No. Uh, no. Uh, Via Rosa. Drea. I didn't have any like super famous yeah. people. I always wanted to, I always wanted to keep it like Fam. we coming up together. Like, yeah. I wanted to feel like, you know what I'm saying, we climbing a hill. Uh-huh. But um all of these people are great vocalists and like even the girls that I uh, tour with, Luna and Shanae, uh-huh. they're great vocalists and um I just listen to them when they tell me about breath control and shit like that. And I add that shit into the booth, bro, and that shit like is literally like I mean, I I'll say any artist on some real shit, like, well, it just depend on who you are, but if you really want to take that shit to the, like, pinnacle of what you can do, just really fuck with your voice and, like, learn that bitch and learn how to breathe and learn how to, you know what I'm saying, just freak that motherfucker. I mean, so many rappers forget to even leave room to breathe in their verses, and they end up <laughs> in the studio punching in every line, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You can hear that, and then you see them perform, and they can't do that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I did that last night, actually. Yeah. I did that on purpose last night, intentionally wrapped a verse straight through on some punching in, yeah. but... 
I'm gonna be able to do it live though. Right? Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna figure that it one out. You just gotta learn with a brief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. you. Uh, so as a seven year old writing raps, what were, what were you writing about? What t- deep topics were you tackling? You wanna hear? It? Yeah, let's I hear. It. Oh, you got it memorized? Let's do it. It's like uh. I'ma make you breathe in, but you're not guaranteed to breathe out. Cause look, Chris coming through without a doubt, like all of the windows. How's your Nintendo? Cause I'm coming through in the big body benzo. I'm a little player that was born a ball, coming up like I'm president of it all. And I'm putting it down. What I say, and I'm keeping it real, putting it down for St. Louis. I don't know nobody else in this world that can't do it. Some shit like wow. that. I was just like, that is that. Twist, I was like, I'm putting it down, going with double time. Yeah. So I was just rapping, trying to rap fast and shit. I, was, I said. A, a dog and a bone, little bow wow was influencing. It was a lot going on back then. Bro. Damn. So were you trying to get your like child rapper on? Were like you trying to be a bow wow type thing? Hell yeah, nigga. Yeah. I want the bitches too. You I'm like this there. nigga got the hoes, cuz yeah. on yeah. me. He even got my hoes. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> uh, what was it like growing up in St. Louis in the '90s, watching like uh, uh, Nelly and all that in the St. Lunatics? Was that a big like local influence? The 2000s and that shit was. Or 2000s, yeah, I mean, that yeah. shit was busting. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, that shit was tight, bro. It ain't never been like that before, and it ain't been like that since. So it's like that shit was. No, tight. that's real. I mean, I was in Alaska at that time when Nelly popped off, and it, that reached any, all the way up there. Did you see any? Did you see a moose? Is it meese? Moose. Oh, it's <laughs> even double. Yeah, like uh, it's mooses. It's, no, it's just moose. You ain't seen no meese, bro. I have a so. This is a crazy story, but moose, like, they live on a one-mile radius the whole year, and every year around Christmas, the same moose ends up in my backyard. Big as fuck? Big as fuck. I it, didn't know mooses was that damn a, big. It, it's a cow, so it's a female, right? So every couple of years, she'll come back with two new calves, so sometimes we have three moose in my backyard. Mooses is cows. There's a ca- the, the males are bulls, and the, the females are cows. You can milk a moose? I've never tried. Niggas be drinking moose milk. We do not, but I, I mean, maybe you could. Oh. They, they don't really like to be tame, you know what I'm saying? But right okay. now, my mom has a has a teenage bull living in her backyard on and off throughout the summer. I'll I'll show you pictures when we're done. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But yes, I see moose. But I've also heard Nelly while I was in Alaska. That's the point. (laughs) It's like St. Louis really got put on at that point. Fuck yeah. Was there an energy in the city at the time? Bro, yes. Yes, The Rams won. Bro, it was a lot going on. You got to remember, motherfucking, we had Kurt Warner who came from a grocery store and fucking balling out of control for the Rams brought us all the way through the season to the Super Bowl. Marshall Falk became a star that year. That's right. Motherfucking uh, goddamn Isaac Bruce, Tory Holt, goddamn Ricky Pro, Isaac Keem, all them niggas yeah. balling out like that. Yeah. Then this nigga Nelly come through wearing all their jerseys backwards yeah. with his friends <laughs> and putting on for the world. Like it was just raw. It was like damn near marketing. It looked yeah. like, all right, we gonna win. We gonna win a chip this year. Uh, yeah, call the label, see if they can call the NFL and let the Rams win this year. That's how the shit felt, G. Yeah, it was jam- it was damn near crazy. It felt like a real like scheme, G. But it was, I don't know. That was just amazing to me. Yeah, I see some shit like that, but you know the Rams gone now. Niggas in LA, it's cool. I'm still rocking though. T Gurley, you know how he do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I live in LA and I'm not a huge Rams fan. I mean, I don't pay attention to NFL. At this I point. man, I feel that like a lot of people don't pay attention to NFL right now. But you know what I'm saying? The Rams gonna get nice out there. Watch, and I'm gonna be so fucking sad. <laughs> um, so. Didn't take to school. Not gonna ask you about school, but you're working in your free time on music and shit. When does this, when do people around you start realizing that you're like a real threat, that you're a talent? When I was fucking niggas up in middle school, I used to uh, I used to like rap against people that ain't even know how to rap. I just John like we you we guys be it, battling in the we call it John and John yeah. and it's like poking fun at like them, playing the dust flaming and that motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. So we I, I used to just rap to uh, rap to John on people and shit and like. I told some nigga he looked like an inside out fat album. <laughs> and like <laughs> I swear to God, after that day, everybody was like, Yeah, that nigga Chris can rap my real name. Chris, they like, yeah, that nigga Chris nice. Yeah, that nigga, that nigga Chris, he look kind, yeah, he hard. And then um I made beats. So like I had I had a little um you remember the random MP3 players you would buy yeah, of course. everywhere. Everybody used to put all their music yeah. on before we got the you know what I'm saying? The phones and yeah, the Apple curse. Yeah. But motherfucking um I used to have the shits um uh, I used to have the shits on my on my little MP3s, and I'd be at school playing it for people in the headphones. They right. like, damn, this nigga hard. Then I was rapping. That's when like I noticed my peers start being like, yo, you tight. You know what I'm saying? The first person that could t- that told me I could rap was my big cousin, yeah. who made me want to rap. Like he was he had a studio and shit. He was rapping. He brought me down to the studio and shit. I recorded a song about my cousin who had got killed. It was a deep ass verse. Uh-huh. So my big cousin like, damn, bro, like. 
It was super deep. I actually damn near can remember it, but it's just hella O D deep. Like yeah. I wouldn't even. But yeah, uh, it was really early. Like that was. Were you and your cousin grade. close? Yeah. Matt. Yeah. Oh God. Oh God. Was he your age when he got killed? He was nah. That's my big cousin. Oh, okay. Nah, he was like six years older than me and shit. Something man, like that's that. terrible. Yeah, Sorry man, to hear St. That. Louis shit. Yeah. yeah, you got a big family out there, lots of cousins and everything. Mm -hmm. Big hey. ass family. My last name is Smith, bro. Like, yeah, so there's a lot of Smiths. Hell yeah, bro. Will, Jaden. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Um, so are you close with a lot of your family members? You guys get together for reunions and shit. Hell yeah, them yeah. my folks. Oh god, little nephew on the, uh, with just the camera. Little nephew on the screen. Got a little braids trying to be like me and shit. Oh shit. Hell yeah, man. Oh, yeah. If I open, he, the, he already open got the screen, too, other nephew on there got braids trying to nice. be like me. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's right. So you, so you got uh brothers and sisters then? Big sisters. I'm the I'm the baby boy. I'm baby boy. So, that's how that nigga. Uh, <laughs> that's how they see him stay. <laughs> baby boy. So. Having uh, big, big sisters and being the youngest brother, do you think that affected like how you are with women now? Like having wanting to feature women that you consider family on your records and everything. Like, are women a big influence in your life? Yeah, it's just more so. It, I man, I ain't trying to sit here like this. How I am, yeah, bro, with ahead. women's, and I always tell people like I ain't, niggas ain't grow up like I grew up, and yeah. that's why like I don't, I don't judge or I don't really like, you know what I'm saying. Uh, People's adoration for women is not nearly as high as mine. Sometimes my shit too much because I just love women on some real shit. Like, but anyway, yeah, motherfucking pookie um, for that coochie, pookie for that coochie for, for real. real. That's I really. I, I love that line because I think it's so visual, and I think like if people aren't paying attention, they would miss that reference. You know. And then also, I got my name Smino from the movie New Jack City, like Nino Brown, Smino Brown, Smino pookie Brown. for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. a lot of bars in that. They, bar. I know. <laughs> no, but fucking um, what's I talking about? Your adoration for women. Oh, no, so, like, yeah, growing up, how I grew up, obviously, you know what I'm saying, I had a um, a little bit more patience to hear, you know what I'm saying, a woman's side of some shit, because my sisters would just tell me shit that I ain't even asked for. Like, man, I ain't even asked for this shit. Yeah. I had bro been broke down and cried on too many times. My mom lived in the house with me, so it's like I grew up in a house of five girls, so shit, naturally, like, my respect for women is high, but... You know what I'm saying? Probably uh, much easier to like check your toxic masculinity when your sister's crying to you about something that happened to her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I with that whole shit like my toxic masculine, whatever, masculinity, masculinity. Yeah, that's <laughs> that. My, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's 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 uh, it's just you know, like I don't even call it that. I, I just I'm a human, cause yeah. like fuck the masculinity shit. I'm a whole human, so. Uh -huh. Outside of toxic max, I can't even say that shit. You got it though. Outside of that shit, it's like just toxic human shit. Yeah, it's way more toxic human shit that we have than just that. So it's like it was running too deep. So I don't really focus on the fact that I'm a male and right. toxic. It's just like I'm a whole person. What's toxic about my person? Right. But when my I I'm I'm so natural. Like I cuss my sisters out and shit like you know right. what i'm saying it's real like ain't ain't no fucking ain't no faking like i ain't finna sit here and act like i'm the motherfucking peachy motherfucker but like you know what i mean it's are so they much musical love. as well man they want to yeah <laughs> but no. one of my sisters be trying to sing she she uh my oldest sister how rad she is singing but she she not like a singer though uh -huh. but my sister my other sister danced and my other two sisters yes one of my my sister closest to asian me is a fucking amazing singer oh really? my god Love her voice. Then my sister over her, she plays piano, she produces, and she sings. Amazing. Um, her husband plays. It, man, yeah, it runs deep. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Sounds like it. Got a dancer. So you make that. Uh, you make that song with your cousin about your cousin that passed away, and ha ha what what happens after that? Is that um, is that kind of your first like? That's my first time polished song that recording. you had. Yeah, that's my first time recording. And um, after that, I mean, shit. After that, I just uh. My pops really. I told my dad, I'm like, shit, I want to record for real, and he got me the shit that so I needed to record. Mm -hmm. And it was like, actually, what's funny is somehow all of that shit was in my granddad's house already, and really? I think he just brought it from over there. And then I just went to the crib. Now, does it run so deep that your granddad was musical too? Yeah, that nigga's a yes, yes. Really? That's where it starts. No way, yeah. My granddad is the dude. He played bass and shit, and oh, like wow. for everybody back then, as you can think about, and. He was just doing a lot of traveling, and you know what I'm saying? He decided to... He told me a story about his um, daughter. Yeah. My auntie just asking him, like, you know what I'm saying? Are oh, you going back home? When he was already at home, because uh -huh. she thought the road was his home. Uh, and he just quit. Oh, man. Like, That's deep. Stop traveling. Yeah. But wow. he had, like, nine fucking kids. G, like, 
Papa had to chill, G. <laughs> yeah. You have to be smooth. I mean, man. that's what that road does to you. you I ain't got no kids, man. Yeah, me neither. I'm yeah. lucky. I'm about to work on them, though. I just man. Grew, I just grew up out the rap life. G, I don't know, bro. I've been in... I, I, I ain't gonna even say that. I hope I don't got no kids. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find out soon enough, I'm sure. Uh, So, okay, you're telling me a story about your granddad. Get, the, all the recording equipment was already at his house. Mm-hmm. And so your dad just brings it over to your crib? His crib. Oh, his, yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, with a dog. That day, yeah, he. I had the dog and the recording. That shit kind of was my like. That's how I remember my like childhood. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Dog studio going outside. How, is that dog still alive? Nah, man. Cuz had to. He had to face that needle, man. Oh man. All right, sick. Yeah, you know what's fucked up. My that's mama sad. sent me a video his last moments, <sighs> right before, like as the needle going to him. I was like, damn, I ain't even want to see that. I was in Chicago at yeah. college and shit. I'm like, ah. Oh, I would not want to see shit. that. Shit, they told me he got real sick when I left type shit on yeah, some like, sad shit. shit. Yeah. yeah, you know, real shit, dogs are like physically and emotionally tied to you. Oh, my like, God. Like, you can hurt your dog by leaving it. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I have a new puppy at home, and I already, like, missed that fool like crazy. I only man. been here a day, you know? I want to get a Pomsky, man. A Pomsky? Yeah. Uh, those are cute as fuck. Yeah, man. I want a Pomsky so all the little things can be like, I want to touch your dog. <laughs> like, no, you can't touch my fucking dog. You know, dog. hey, the pro- that, that's the thing, though, is that you, you scheme to get a cute dog so that girls don't want to touch it, but you forget that, like, big dudes like dogs, too, and they'll be like, oh, let me touch your dog. And then it's like, you just got to deal with everybody at that point. Oh, no. Big dudes Too many people. ain't going to be able to touch my dog, either. I ain't going to let nobody touch my dog, but I'm going to just be like, yeah, you see. Yeah. <laughs> oh god And I think I'm gonna name him bruh Name him bruh yeah. You heard Valet's dog's name What Ferrari His name Ferrari Oh uh, Fer- Fer- Ferrari Ferrari Valet Hey I think the only other person in the world That's as good as wordplay As I am Is Valet I love Valet. Valet's raps It's him Yeah That nigga okay. is so cold he might be one of my top five right now. He's oh, probably he's, he's one of my favorite new rappers. What I was like kind of thinking about the other day is in listening to his raps, a lot of it is kind of that the whole, um, you know, the rap fantasy shit of like the luxury, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he shouts out luxury brands that I've never even heard of. And I'm like, <laughs> how do you even learn about these brands? You know what I'm saying? Because like yeah. when you're a kid and before you're rapping, you can't afford none of that shit. So mm-hmm. you still got to learn about them somehow. And Gee. apparently I'm learning from Valet. It's a lot of fucking, if you rap, bro. All you see is fashion. Yeah, like, right. That's all you see. Yeah, nigga, man, it's a lot of shit out there that rhyme. Yeah, it's so many. I love putting fashion words in my songs because yeah. they always cool, like Bushimi. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? right. Like, <laughs> they just they got mad wild rhyme schemes for yeah, the you know like oh fashion God. brands are different rhyme schemes than you would hear in a normal word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can just kind of like yeah, that boy definitely loved to uh, shout out that. Uh, uh, fashion shit, dog. Yeah. Fuss with it. Yeah, he's dope. Um, so you got a dog? You're recording at the house. Sorry, oh, we man. get on side notes here. You know what I'm saying? We, right, get we, a, we, we no, go I on see. tangents. We go tangential. Um, so do you? Is this when you start like really working on trying to get some cohesive projects together? Or did you put out mixtapes before Black Swan? Uh, yeah, I, I got. Uh, so before Black Swan, I had Black Jupiter. Mm-hmm. Before Black Jupiter, it was six, six, six. Not six, but six. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. So six, 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 and then um. Before that, I was just I put out like eighteen songs on SoundCloud, yeah. which is really how I got it. Like how I got Notice. my shit noticed. And then I had this song called Colors with uh-huh. my bro Monty Booker, uh-huh. and um, that shit like got like twenty million streams right now. It's probably my most streams on a song. No shit. Like I never went platinum or nothing like that before, but twenty million streams is kind of dope for me. And that's just on Spotify. That's a lot. I think. What you start playing shows and shit at that point. Yeah, I played a few shows at the crib. I was putting my own shit together, so my mindset was always like. We gotta put. We gotta present it. It gotta be us productions. <laughs> oh right. God! Like that's how I always was thinking. So I make all the CDs, then got them print the tickets. Like I used to. I had my homie. He uh worked around the way, and he uh his his people's had like a little print store. And yeah. Shit. Print my tickets for me. Printed my tickets out and um pass out my own tickets. Wow. Elementary school. Uh, I had a show my final day of high school. Uh-huh. And I also had an assignment dude that was going to, like, if I didn't turn it in, I wasn't going to graduate. Because, uh-huh. bro, it was that bad. Uh-huh. And um, anyway, long story short, I uh, I had a show that same day, though, like, that I was putting on. So this was like a project to me. I'm like, bro, I, I'm basically explaining to my English teacher, like, Miss Vaughn, I did this, I did this, I did this. The show's here tonight. I got these people coming out. I sold this many tickets. Like I, I, I gotta, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, I'm give sorry. Me a fucking like, a. I did I'm, more work. I'm than like, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I can't write this essay right now, G. And she was like, 
Chris, if you do this, I will literally pass you. If you, if you, I forgot what it was. She yeah. had, she just asked me to do something real slight. I had went to her class. It's like 5 p.m., bro. After, nigga, I'm a senior in high school. We get out of school at noon, yeah. so it's like I'm in, I'm in her shit at five. My shows are like seven across town, so. I did this shit right quick and I just gave it to her. And my boy, my boy Barry, he uh, he he the homie and shit. He uh, he fin he low key finished some shit that I didn't finish. Yeah, cause he was performing in that show for me yeah. too. So he finished the shit for me and then um, shit, we went by our way. I graduated. And that's but how like, you graduated on I, the yeah. on the night of your first big show. Yeah, well, yeah, mm-hmm. my first like actual time showcasing myself. Yeah, yeah. Like, where where was, was the was it a venue? You like hired it was out at a, a store? I, I, uh-huh. uh, my homies had a clothing store. And I um I just performed the next door. I brought all my speakers from the crib, my mic from the crib. <laughs> I just brought all my shit. Yeah, I literally yeah. like did the, produce the sound, the tickets, the goddamn. I did everything, G. Now I find that kind of interesting and thematic to what you've been saying that you uh put on this show, you self produced it, you controlled every aspect of it all the way down to the tickets, which is something I've literally never heard anybody do before. Oh, so, man. but then the way you talk about like, oh, I didn't want to play organized sports because you can't tell me what to do. Like, it sounds to me like. Uh, maybe you're a bit of, bit of a control freak, freak, perfectionist. I get it from my pops, G. Yeah, I'm a super control freak, bro. I like to know what's going on. Like I have to know what the fuck going on. I, I don't feel safe if mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on. Now I don't have to have control of everything. Though. Mm-hmm. That's a very bad. Because I was gonna say that it, it, when no. you are have that kind of control issues, it's hard to trust other people. No, no, I feel no, no, like no, no. so like a, putting I, jobs in other people's hands becomes scary at that point. Nah, I got a great team. Yeah, like, um, I'm cool. I'm actually blessed. Like the thing about it is. Like, if you're going to be, if you, like I said, you know how you talking about the toxic masculinity shit? Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'm not thinking about that. I'm yeah. thinking about the things in my, as a human that's toxic to myself, like the whole fact that I'm a control freak. Like, I know that. I knew that about myself a long time ago. I yeah. used to get mad about shit. Like, bruh, like, why the fuck this ain't go like this? And like, it's because I can't control shit, everything. But me learning how to, like, distribute my control to my own self, like, mm-hmm. all right. You can control this, but you don't need to be controlling this and this. You need to trust someone. You know what I'm saying? You need to trust yourself to make the right decision. So like, it was just like a lot of shit like that. And once I started opening that kind of lane for myself, my team grew a lot tremendously. Mm-hmm. Like when I first moved to Chicago, he can he can he vouch for me, but I ain't fuck with nobody. Mm-hmm. Like I was just at his studio. He's the only person I fuck with. My manager, classic. That's what I'm pointing over. Yeah, though. Chris. Shout out, Chris. Only person I fucked with. G. You know, like I ain't I ain't like. Literally, like I'm like I'm not clicking up with say money. I'm not clicking up with none of these treat crew niggas. Not, them, them was the niggas in Chicago. Mm-hmm. I'm cool with all of them, mm-hmm. all partners, all homies. G, but I just like I can't click up with none of y'all. And we created zero fatigue, put it in diamond, set it in stone, mm-hmm. and like now that shit, like that's what we that's what we do. And now it's like a big ass team of people and shit. Like, bro, it's tight. It's super tight. Um. Yeah, tell me about Zero Fatigue. That's your. Well, it, it, I don't know. It's not a. Is it? Is it a crew? Would you call it a crew, or is it just your team? Zero Fatigue is legitimately a record label. Like it's, yeah, right. Yeah, legit. Like under Interscope record uh, label, legitimately. Yeah. So you like, guys have a subsidiary under Interscope. Yeah, then? Like yeah. A legit label. Bang. It's um, a squad. It's a family first. Family. Zero is the gang. Like it's not like a thing where it's like. Oh yeah, it's about to be a new Zero Fatigue member next next week. Right. Nah. No new it's friends. It's not gonna be no new niggas. It's gonna be my niggas. Now the label end of it, all of that shit, I I don't want nothing to do with. I just so happen to have the um likeness to get that kind of situation. So right. I ended up having that great JV situation. Like it's super 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 great. Shout out to Interscope. They hella cool. And um yeah, I let my homies run it. Shit. Yeah, let let Classic run it. Let Henny run it. Let them niggas run it. Cause shit. I what other artists it. are on Zero? Barry. Yeah. Allen, or well he go by Barry. Yeah. Um, Barry, J2, Monty Booker. Uh, like on the actual label? Or just, uh, just like, gang? Yeah, gang. Yeah, Barry, J2, Raven Lene. Yeah. Goddamn. Uh, my boy L10. He's an engineer, but he's a fucking artist nonetheless. Uh-huh. My boy No Saddam, a fucking artist. Uh, classic, obviously. Um, myself. Did I say Raven already? You did say Raven. I did say Raven. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of people affiliated like John Doe. Out of Chicago, you got my cousin Drew. It's we we just real heavy like in that sense. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's a yeah. bunch of affiliates. Like where that. did you come up with the, with the the name Zero Fatigue? I was just rapping. I was like Zero Fatigue. Yeah. I'm out of my league, and I was just like on some like 
That's it. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Zero fatigue. And my boy, uh, J2, was in the studio with me. Like, nigga, that's the gang. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. That's what time it was. Yeah. How do you, um, I don't know, I guess I look at you as such a talent, like such a such an intimidating talent. Like, how do you decide when an artist is on that same level with you? Like, how do you meet somebody that you're like, that, that you're impressed with? You know what I'm saying? Man, I just like people that do them. Yeah. Like, un. un, un unapologetically do them like bro like and, and then do it good like shit my man's all my all my partners like my boy Barry like for instance he's like my biggest inspiration for rap like I love do- hearing him rap I love hearing him construct songs he don't even write shit down no more that nigga tight and it's like it's not really a thing where I feel like a motherfucker on my level or anything like that cause it's that's just, the thing is like there's gotta be times when you're like when you're rapping and you're kinda like nobody could fuck with me Right. All the time, bro. Exactly. I always feel like that. I mean, exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's so bad. But it ain't even like, it's it's a sport, bro. This my shit. This right. my sport. This is my field. This is what I do. You're supposed to feel like that. But I don't also feel like I'm the only nigga. It's so many great people out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But when I do my thing, that's how I feel. But like my bros, like I said, there's no competition with them. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's just more so like, uh, you, you in the studio? Bet. I'm finna get in the studio. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Uh, you recording? Bet. I'm finna get back on my shit. Like, it's cool just to get them checkpoints and inspiration just to see your man, you know, still doing their thing, you know? Yeah. Um, I got a question for you about your creative process, which I know can be boring to talk about, <laughs> but I'm wondering, some of your songs are so intricate, right? And like I said, they pivot on a, on, on a razor's edge just to something completely different. And also, you have so many different melodies, harmonies, um, pockets of the beat that you find. Like, how long does it take you to construct a song? Have you been stuck on, have you ever been stuck on a song for a month? Or has it ever taken you six months to make a song? Or do you just pump them out quick? Hell no, boy. I tell yeah. you hell, I be, I be, sometimes I be feeling silly. I feel like I'm the last person in the world that fucking writes. Do you like to write alone? I don't give a fuck, yeah. man. I like to have space, though. I don't like to be, like, I don't like when people are all up on me and shit, but yeah. like I could write right now, child in the room, and just come up with some shit. But it's like, uh, it's, I guess it's more like for me, uh, when I when I'm making shit, mm-hmm. it takes as long as it needs to, cause I'm more like, I don't know, like I'll take a fucking whole studio session and even just finish up half of a verse just to get some shit right, or sometimes it'll take me fucking ten minutes. Like some songs take ten, like um Anita. Yeah. I fucking wrote Anita in like, bro, 30 minutes maybe, because I was in the studio and the beat was playing, and I was in there just like, that's what I was doing, like, doing that shit, right? I fucking hate you for that song because it is stuck in my head always. (laughs) Like, it's always stuck in my head. That melody is catchier than fuck. That's probably going to be one of my biggest songs for the rest of my life. Yeah. Real shit. I already know. Because I I guess. Outside of that, it's just more like a thing where I'm just trying to. uh, I'm just trying to cater to whatever the song needs. Yeah. Really, like, well, because that's my thing is in hearing you talk about being a control freak, being a perfectionist in a sense. Like, I, I can just imagine that some of those bars, like just even the you know Pookie for that coochie for real, that that type of shit. Like, they're so simple but perfect that I imagine you probably rewrite a lot of bars like a hundred times until it's just right and fits. Nah, in the part. In the I part. don't do that. The no? first shit to come to my mind really? is what gets written. Yeah. I don't do that. I don't rewrite bars because it's like. I feel like it's trying too hard. Mm. Once it feel a little effort, like it, you, it should feel like, damn, he just woke up and started singing that shit. Mm. Like once I get to rewriting and doing all that shit, it don't, I don't know. So you and don't plus, overthink it. Nine times out of ten, the first shit you say is the right thing. Like on mm. as far as music goes, yeah. and like when you feel like you fucked up, if you play it back, it's probably a cool mistake that you wasn't even a thought of. Now yeah. your your body's reflex just shows you some other shit. Your mind like sometimes works against your muscles yeah. and shit on in this music shit like in the studio. And so your mind can literally hinder you like sometimes. Do you I ever fight to... writer's block? Writer's block. You ever got white writer's block? <laughs> I don't really. I think it's more so like I don't call it that, bro, because it's like it's like claiming it. Yeah. I don't claim certain shit. Like I know I'm sounding all deep and shit. Nah. I don't call it that because I like to um I like to think of it as like if I have a writer's block, that means it's just some other task in my life that is just like yeah. it's like my mind isn't free. You gotta take I can care do that shit all day. I can write. I've been writing my whole life. So it's just like something else has my mind, what has my mind. So it's like maybe you need to go reflect. So I'll just go reflect. And once you figure it out then the juices come back. Nine times out of ten I just smoke, bro. And uh, then I yeah. write. <laughs> yeah, that helps. yeah. Nine times out of ten. Yeah, that's tight. So uh, how how did that show go? The one that uh with the English class, did it end up like being pretty big? 
Yeah, it was tight. It was uh, like good 50, 60 people there. Yeah. 50, 60, 70. Mm. It was cool. Like, it, it was a store, so it wasn't like crazy, crazy, but like, it was all the little cool bitches and shit from school. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. And all the cool yeah, niggas. Yeah, of so course. Shit, yeah. Get the girls with the stage eyes, you know. So then, uh, soon thereafter, is that when you moved to Chicago? Yeah, I went to uh, Columbia College for a year. Wait, uh, like, Columbia is like a real pretty fancy school, isn't it? Scam. Really? Scam. Oh wait, Columbia College, not Columbia University. Oh hell no, Columbia College, Chicago. Okay, that's that's like a for-profit college or something. Cap, I don't know. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Niggas is a for take your money. College. Yeah, okay. So you forty fucking thousand dollars fuck up uh. a lot. And I mean, I my pops even was like, bro, don't do that. I know you know, I don't like school, G. But my pops also was like. Let me get my son up out of St. Louis. Okay. On some shit. So like, I, I kind of repeat that he was on, he knew. He literally knew. He knew I was going to like, bro, I damn near got put out of school because my grades were like. Right. Because I was just at Classic House all the time, bro. He yeah. used to have to try to put me out. I remember he was like, bro, do you got grad? Did you, have you been doing your work? Because his ass graduated from yeah. Columbia, bro. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's the only person to ever do that. <laughs> okay. You think I'm playing? I have. I do think you're playing. Gee, it's been one person in the history of that whole school. We're that, in the midst of royalty right now. The one person. Gee, real shit. But yeah. anyway, Chris Classic. I think he became the first. You know what I'm saying? Male person ever to um, graduate from Columbia. You know what I'm saying? Kind of just took me in on some G shit. He got but, his degree in Smino management. Yeah, bro. Yeah. He went to school to manage me, basically, bro. Oh God, cause he already had his studio. Did you have fam in Chicago, like, or did you just move out there blind? Mm -hmm. I went out there cause my cousin Drea, yeah, the girl that's on Ricky Millions. Uh -huh. I went out there because of her, and she was doing all this cool shit. She was on a glow in the dark tour with Yay and Pharrell. Uh -huh. She was like signed to Lupe FNF. She was putting out cool music. I seen her all over the blogs and shit back then. Like that's what she was doing. Yeah, so she was my inspiration. Uh, did you take Chicago instantly Or did it take a while For you to warm up to the city How did you feel I hate moving? Chicago When I first moved out yeah. bro It was so cold I lived downtown Yeah It was just super cold um, People was weird to me But I was realizing After a while I wasn't around Chicago people I was around college students That wasn't from the city Right So I'm like Oh I'm around all these plans. Weird ass art kids Cause they musty So I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Let me get the fuck From around here Yeah And I start going to Bro crib all the time And I start meeting Chicago people I'm like I like Chicago more Motherfuckers, so I yeah. ended up moving back. And so, did you start running into the Chicago rappers out there? Yeah, yeah. How his studio? Yeah, how they all recorded his studio. Chance, all of them niggas come to his studio. Vic, who else? Everybody, everybody been in your studio, right? Yeah, everybody's been in his studio, G. Yeah. Everybody and from so, the streets to the motherfucking uh, library. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. And so, was there like a kind of a, a brotherhood between you you guys before everybody started popping? Like everybody's trying to do the same thing, and you guys felt a certain fraternal Not uh, me. bond? No. All them niggas start fucking with me when I got popping. Yeah. I'm going to keep it a buck, but it's cool because I ain't make it a thing where I was trying to be fucked with. I was too broke. I ain't had I ain't had nothing to talk about to nobody. I was just trying to do my thing. Yeah. So everybody in Chicago started fucking with me when I got popping, really. Like, that's really what happened. Like, I, my family is, cl like, classic fam. Like, that's really my family. Yeah. But outside of that, it's just, like, my now my new family in Chicago, all the people that's, t like, oh, get, welcome me with open arm, I appreciate them. Uh -huh. But, like I said, I know where my day ones are in Chicago also. Like, that right. classic fam shit. But, you know, outside of that, man, you know, shit been smooth in Chicago, bro. I love Chicago. I get so much love, man. So much love in Chicago. So how long was it from meeting Chris, moving to Chicago, all that stuff, until, like, the majors start calling you? And was there a catalyst for the majors to start calling and people going, like, ooh, who's Smino? Who is this dude? Hmm. I don't know, bro. I guess it was like a uh, – when, um, when I put the 666 project up, Mm -hmm. Uh, pigeons and planes. They uh, shout out Jacob, my boy, man. Yeah, he, he's a. Uh, I love pigeons and planes. I've known that dude like ten years now. It's like one of the like best blogs in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they actually care. Anyway, his ass uh, posted my shit and uh did a feature on me. Like, I yeah. did a photo shoot. It was tight. Then he that then might that might have with, actually been where I first heard your name. To be honest, it was that, and then Andrew Barber. Oh yeah, I fake short drive some credit because. He put me on with the Red Bull shit, right? He put me on with the Red Bull shit. And um, with the Red Bull shit, I ended up going on tour with Mick Jenkins. Yeah. And then I toured with Mick Jenkins around the country and shit. And I had a chance to hit these markets. Like, I didn't have to pay for shit. They paid me a lot of money. Was that more your money. first tour? Yeah. More How? money. Well, nah. My first tour was in London and Paris okay. and Germany. Wow. But Fancy. 
Yeah, it was weird <laughs> to that fact that I even did that shit, yeah. G. But I mean, SoundCloud so tight. It was so tight back then. Yeah, I had fans, and it was a way to locate them and advertise to them. And Elixir Global is just like, I don't even know what they yeah. fucking do, G. But they flew me out, paid for everything, nice. and took me on tour out there. Then I went to, on tour with Mick after that, and I hit all these markets. And the cool thing about that was Mick already got fans and shit. That was like but when like, the water came out or something, or what was? Nah, it? that was after, yeah. that was way after that. Oh, so like, yeah. I'm, I bro, I basically was on tour. Motherfuckers like first time seeing me may have heard of me before, but first time seeing me was probably like, a, the crowds was about what six hundred. And was it like an uphill probably battle? Probably about fifty the, people knew me. You feel me? So it's like, no, nah, it's hard being the opening act. Though. Nah, no, nah, bro. I shut, shut. I shut. I, sh- I, sh- I fuck shit up. Gee, I was in that bitch like bet. I, I'm very good at commanding crowds because I grew up in church. I'm not scared of fucking crowds. Crowds do not fucking scare me. Right. I scare them bitches, actually. Yeah. So, like, I, I, I always was just on some shit. Like, I, first of all, he didn't have merch, so I had merch. So right. I was getting money. Yeah. And I was on some shit where it was like, bet, you know what I'm saying? I'm finna just go out here and steal all his fans. You feel me? That was my That's goal. That's attitude, yeah. That was my goal. Yeah. Nick, my brother, he know how he know what it is. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna go out and start his friends. I'm trying to uh, like I'm trying to get my shit popping. Yes, sir. And it worked. Like a lot of motherfucking I had a lot of new fans after that tour and then um a lot of new eyes on me. Man, I it's a lot it's a long road, G. Like I stand there so much shit I can a credit to why we at where we at, but like man, it was a long ass road. Dude. It is a long road, but you know what? You got a long road in front of you because Fuck I feel yeah. like it's just barely starting. You know what I'm saying? It takes ten years to have an overnight success. Me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's funny, right? It's like people, oh, he came out of nowhere. People don't know. No. Yeah, people don't. I mean, shit. You said you started at seven years old. Not many people can say that. I just am a musician. Like that's it's, a it's a ble- it's start, a blessing to know. I didn't start at that, this career. Yeah, you know, I started this career. You were practicing for it though. I was getting ready. You know what I'm saying? You're Mr. Miyagiing yourself. Miyagi. That's what that is. <laughs> uh, Mr. Miyagi. Hell, <laughs> Mr. Miyagi. Uh, but hey, I think in the future we'll be able to talk about the rest of your career later. I think we did what we came to do today, and I look forward to your performance tonight. Oh, I appreciate you taking the time. Oh, uh, with that said, tell the people where they can find you online. Man. Smino, like Nino, S M I N O. Anywhere at, at that Everywhere. on Twitter. You can. He got a very Google friendly name. You can just Google him and you will find all of his music. Be sure to listen to Black Swan. I'm sure you got new projects in the works that are going to be dropping on the world soon. Oh, bro, I, ah, yeah. You just yeah. released a new single. Yeah, I dropped a couple songs. I, I, it's this shit called For Sport. It's a series. I'm. Um, it's a series. But I, I just made some shit last night out here in New York. So I'm about to uh, do another For Sport probably in the next week or something i don't know there you go drop some more shit but my album is done so yeah nice i look forward to it man i look forward to it well thank you guys for tuning in my name is lee so maybe my name is intuition you can follow me on twitter at it's intuition or at kind of neat instagram is the same uh this was skull candy you feel me and we appreciate it thank you skr skr Thanks for tuning in to You Feel Me. If you want to hear more, go to skullcandy.com forward slash music. Want a pair of headphones like the ones we use for today's episode? As a special thanks to our listeners, we're giving you 30% off your next Skull Candy order with the promo code Music You Can Feel. That's M U S I C Y O U C A N F E E L. Subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app now to stay up to date on our latest episodes.